Imagine if we could truly see the universe for what it is. The sparse and diffuse plasma and dust, the luminosity of ultraviolet, radio waves, x-rays, and infrared. What if we could see an expansion? We likely wouldn't have gone decades thinking the universe had homogeneous, isotropic, large-scale dynamics. When we look into the heavens, combining our best technologies, this is often what we see. Large-scale filaments of matter, strings of galaxies in the cosmic web, and yet with less than 10% of the radio range explored at modern level technology, and with the low surface brightness scope set to invade this field of science over the coming years, they are certain there is so much more to see. The discoveries hint that the cosmic web might as well be a giant copper wiring around the universe and how it transports charged matter and gases from node to node, and yet modern technology struggles to directly understand these large-scale currents and fields. Well, Dust is a trickster and can help us to understand why. They continue to find entire galaxies hidden by dust. They flew Cassini through the water jets erupting from the south pole of Enceladus, and the magnetometer showed 95% more magnetic fields than the Langmuir probe showed electric current. The electric current was hidden by the dust. And that's in situ measurement, actually flying through the electric current and magnetic fields, and they missed 95% of the current. No wonder we can't adequately characterize the cosmos at vast distances. And when dust teams up with plasma, electric fields, they become the Loki of the universe. They first noticed the non-gravitational control of such particles on the ISS, showing that the dust lined up, formed interesting geometries and even crystal structures with the electric field, which have also been spotted in deep space along lines of sight to great background illuminators. The reason we still need correction to major scale maps and dynamics is because of these tricksters, and essentially, they're forming a kaleidoscope through which we view the heavens, around the sun, around the galaxy, around our local group, the local sheet, the dipole repeller, and around the filaments of current called the cosmic web. Dust also aligns with magnetic fields, further adding to the complexity of the puzzle we see in the sky. When considering the vastly important and yet to be fully realized role of plasma and magnetic fields in gravitational lensing, I'd say they don't have a real clue how far away some things really are. We are also approaching a point of ultimate irony in this field. Cosmology is on the verge of collapse with the long failure of wimp dark matter and the enormous axe to axions and string theory delivered in late March. With the latest revelation this week about the matter-antimatter non-mirror symmetry, almost everything about their concept of large scales of distance and time is called into question. Their last great hope is the ironic part, the Vera Rubin telescope. It headlines the low surface brightness wave coming to astronomy in the years ahead, and she is the one who kicked plasma cosmology to the curb, improperly, and got everyone to focus on dark matter in full. Her telescope is the one that will reveal enough missed material to make them finally reevaluate her mistakes. And even with that new material seen, we'll still have to work around the tricks that dust and plasma and apparently magnetic fields are playing on our eyes, telescopes, and satellites. The future of cosmology is thrilling to an observer, cataclysmic to the established mainstream, and revealing of truth and guidance. Whenever you're watching this, I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.